what that music say? Yes, sir, Amos. That music say good health to all from Rexall. The Amos and Andy Show, written by Joe Conley and Bob Mosier, featuring Johnny Lee, Millie Bruce, Corny Anderson, Horace Stewart, Madeline Lee, Ruby Dandridge, Lillian Randolph, Jeff Alexander's music, yours truly, Harlow Wilcox, and starring radio's all-time favorites, Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll, Amos and Andy. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Freeman Gosden. You know you can pretty well judge the quality of a product by how far the manufacturer will go in backing it up. That's why I like to keep reminding you listeners that Rexall drug products are sold under a money-back guarantee. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, every Rexall drug product must give you the satisfaction you want, or you can return it to your Rexall druggist and get your money back. Well, our friend Andrew H. Brown recently decided to improve himself. He went down to the local high school to sign up for the evening adult education program. At the moment, he has just entered a classroom on the third floor and approached the instructor. Uh, excuse me, I'd like to enroll in one of the courses. Uh, what subject does you teach here? Well, in this classroom, we give instructions in American history. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be interested in history. <laughs> I wouldn't care. I don't want to... I, well, I, uh, uh, uh... Hello. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Teresa Thompson, the instructor. Yeah, well, my name is Andrew H. Brown. And you know something? You is the prettiest history teacher I done ever seen. <laughs> I take it you're interested in the course. I have my enrollment list here on the desk. Now, before I write your name down, are there any questions? Yeah. Is you married? <laughs> Why, no. Is you engaged? No, I'm not. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Could I arrange for private instruction? Well, come on into office, you Andy. Uh, what's this to hear about you going to night school? Soaking your feet in the fountain of knowledge, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I've really been learning about history for the past two weeks. Kingfish, do you know that in 1812, the British come over here, burned down the White House, and drove the president and his family right out of the place? They did, huh? Sure did. You know, if the Republicans is going to get any place this time, it looks like their best bet is to get in touch with the British again. <laughs> but, Kingfish, the best part about that night school is the teacher. Mm, got yourself crushed up on her, huh, boy? I'll say. Uh, her name is Teresa Tompkins, and I am really crazy about her. Confidential, I ain't told this to nobody else, but I'm planning on popping the question to Teresa tonight. Oh, you really in a nuptulating frame of mind, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> Only trouble is, after I pop the question to her, I got to pop it to her papa. Mm. <laughs> is the old man strict, huh? Yeah, she is his only child, and he is mighty particular. He calls her his sweet little rose. Yeah, well, looking at you there, son, uh, I can see why he wouldn't want his rose mixed up with no big fat ephus like you. <laughs> well, I hope the papa don't throw me out the house. Teresa's going to try to soften him up before I get there. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, have her soften him up first. Oh, yeah. You know, and I'll never forget the night 22 years ago when my when I had a little heart-to-heart -heart talk with uh, Sapphire's papa. Yeah. Yeah, I was going with her, but I... Didn't have much thought of marrying her. And then one night I found myself on my knees in front of a papa pleading with him to let me marry her. Well, why was you down on your knees in front of a papa? I couldn't help it, Sapphire. I had a half Nelson on me. Oh, yeah. But, Father, don't you understand? I love Andy Brown. You've got to let me marry him. Teresa, I can't help it. I don't think that nincompoop is the right man for you. Why, he's nothing but an overstuffed loafer. 
I admit he's a little fat and doesn't have a job right now, but I... I have never met such a completely stupid, irresponsible boob of a man in my life. <laughs> he's nothing but a big, fat slob, and what's more, I don't believe he loves you. Daddy, I know he loves me. Well, I say he doesn't. Why don't you ask him if he loves you? Put it up to him once and for all. All right, I will. Andy, do you love me? Well, of course I does, honey. <laughs> well, if my daughter's mind is made up, it's all right with me. But, Brown, let me tell you one thing. If I find that you've had a lot of women in the string before you met my daughter, you'll live to regret it. Now I'm going to my study. Hmm. Oh, Andy, don't pay any attention to Father. It's enough that we love each other. But it's not true what Father said. You've never gone out with any other girls but me, have you? Oh, who, me? <laughs> I never had nothing to do with girls. Up to the time I was 19, I thought that gals were just boys with long haircuts. <laughs> I'm so glad. I like you so much, Andy. Yeah, and I was crazy about you too, my <laughs> honey bun. Oh, Andy, I just love to sit here and cuddle up to you. Let me put my head on your shoulder. Ah, uh, there. Mm, yeah. <laughs> now, let me give you a great big squeeze. Oh, wee. Oh. <laughs> No, I ain't. You were squeezing my fountain pen and the ink is leaking down my rib. <laughs> oh, it's you. Come on in, Andy. Come on in. Uh, how's the boy? Kingfish, me and Teresa's engaged. Her papa done sneered his permission at me. The wedding is set for a week from today. Yeah, well, you really have a boy. And you're lucky getting a cute little girl like Teresa. Yeah. But in marriage, sometimes it ain't too long before the sweet little cucumber turns out to be a sour pickle. Of <laughs> course, it was different in my case. Sapphire was pretty well vinegared up by the time I got a hold of it. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, what has you got there, son? Oh, this. I got the wedding invitation to send out to my friends. Look at that. Mr. Arthur J. Tompkins announces the marriage of his daughter, Teresa... To Andrew H. Brown, Esquire. Yeah, got a stack of them there. Well, tell me something there, son. Uh, is Teresa, Papa, got any inkling about all the gals you done been out with in the past? No, no, he ain't got an inkle. <laughs> I told him I done never looked at another gal. Mm, that's quite a statement. According to that, you must have done a lot of smooching with your eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I ain't taking no chances of Teresa and her Papa finding out. I even brung my little black book down here. I'm going to burn this thing. Yeah. Look at that, Kingfish. That's got the name and address of every gal I ever went with. Holy smoke, look at that. 82 pages of gal. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you've done it, Andy, unless you use the two-platoon system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andy. Yeah, look at this in the book here. Here's one of your old flames, Miss Blue. Yeah, buzz me, Miss Blue. <laughs> yeah, you two were the powerful item there, all right? Boy, there's one gal that'd like to get her claws on you again. The way you left her waiting at the altar. Oh, here's another nasty item. Abigail Simpson. Yeah, she sued me for alienation of confection. <laughs> she swore she'd make trouble for me someday. Yeah, I'd say that most of the gals in this book has got it in for you, and If any of them ever run into Teresa or Papa, it'd be curtains for you, boy. Yeah, well, I'm going to burn this black book, and then I'm going to get these invitations mailed out. You see, I got the names and addresses of all the Lodge brothers and my friends in my address book here. This little red book, see? Yeah, well, say, uh, uh, why don't you send the invitation and the address book down to the public sea nog on the corner? She'll mail the thing out for you. Say, Lightning's out getting coffee. Uh, you can have him do it when he gets back. Yeah, that's right. And I can have him burn this little black book at the same time. Yeah, well, Andy, at last you're going to sniff the orange blossoms, huh? I tell you, Andy, marriage is a great thing. Instituted for the happiness of mankind. Designed for the mutual understanding. Where two people can live together... In harmony and bliss. And I tell you, Andy, someday they're going to figure out a way to make that thing work, you know. That... Now, as you got that straight, Lightning, 
Uh, yeah, I was in the Well, now, uh, you burn the little black book, and then you take the red book, uh, uh, address book, down to the public stenographer on the corner. Uh, yeah, I got both books right here. I'll get busy on it right away. Now, uh, let, let, let me see now. Whoa, what did Miss Andy tell me? Oh, yeah. I take this little red book down to the basement and I burn it. Then I take the other one over to the stenographer and has her send a wedding invitation Every name in the little black book. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist speaking to you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store name. We've done that because we recommend and sell the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Rexall Plenamins are a good example. These popular multivitamin capsules give you 11 important vitamins, including red vitamin B12, plus the nutritional extras of liver concentrate and iron. Yes, Plenamins are one of the best balanced vitamin formulas money can buy, yet they cost only pennies per day. So try Plenamins, won't you? That's P-L-E-N-A-M-I-N-S, Plenamins, at Rexall Drugstores everywhere. Well, come on into office, and there are only two more days till your wedding, huh? Yeah, Lightning say he got all invitations mailed out. All the people must have got them by now. Yeah, say, Andy, uh, hey, look at that on my desk. One of the brothers then left a book on it. Hmm. One of them little black books. Oh, yeah. I think that I, uh, I, uh, uh, hey, Kingfish. All of a sudden, I feels the way I did back home when I turned the sheets down on my bed and found that rattlesnake curled up on my hot water bottle. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Now, this is just a coincidence. Don't touch the book now. Wait a minute. There's a million little black books. Don't get nervous. Don't grab it there now. Don't even touch it. I'll settle the whole thing. This just happens to look like the one that lightning burnt. Let me buzz him on the intercom here and put your mind at ease. Yeah, buzz something around here. Uh, yeah, Mr. Kingsley? Uh, Lightning, you burnt the book that uh, Andy told you about, didn't you? Uh, that's right. Then you took the other book down to the public stenographer and uh, she mailed the invitations out? Uh, that's right. And then I put the book that the stenographer used back on your desk. Yeah, thank you. See that, Andy? Lightning say he burnt the black book and he put the... Red book here on the desk. Yeah, this book uh, laying here is the red book, huh? That's right. <laughs> that is the blackest red book I done ever. Seen. <laughs> mm, yeah. Kingfish Lightning mixed the books up. They don't send a wedding invitation to every one of my old gal friends. Boy, they'll be swarming all over me. Call me. Wait till Teresa and her papa find out about this. Now, wait a minute, Annie. Wait a minute. Now, maybe none of them will uh, show up. Oh, me, Kingfish. I wish I'd have gotten in bed with that rattlesnake. No, no. Now, wait a minute. Well, daughter, this is one of our last evenings together before your wedding. Yes, and Daddy, I'm so happy that you like Andy now. Well, I didn't at first, but... Oh, I'll get it, dear. Yes? What can I do for you? My name is Miss Blue. Yes, yes. Well, what is it? Well, I received this card announcing the coming marriage of your daughter. Yes? Mr. Andrew H. Brown jilted me seven years ago. Miss Blue, I think you better come in and sit down. <laughs> Miss Blue, this story you've told me is shocking. <laughs> well, and that's the whole story, Mr. Tompkins. He made violent love to me and then left me at the altar. I'm flying back home tonight. I just come up here to tell you about this horrible man. <laughs> oh, Daddy, this is terrible. What are we going to do? You get Miss Blue another handkerchief. I'm going over and have a heart-to-heart talk with Andrew H. Brown. Now, 
Now, listen, then. Just stop piercing up and down the floor here. You wearing out the carpet. Oh, boy. Kingfish, I'm half out of my mind. Suppose these old gal friends of mine gets the idea of coming up here. Suppose it. That... Hey, Kingfish, I think somebody's at the door. Yeah, that certainly is a nasty knock, all right. It must be the landlord. Mm. Yeah, that's a dispossessed knock if I ever heard one. <laughs> yeah, better let him in, Anna. Okay. Brown, I want to talk to you. Oh, how is your Papa dear? Don't you Papa dear me. I just had a visit from a Miss Blue. Well, I, I, uh, Miss Blue. Well, I... Brown, she told me all about you. She was your secretary for four years, 1940 to 1944. How you jilted her, and you said you'd never looked at another woman. Well, now, now, wait a minute, Miss Tompkins. Before you go on here, it's my duty to inform you that Miss Blue... Don't accuse the innocent man here. Oh, did she drag somebody else into this mess? No, no. <laughs> uh, you see, uh, and in 1940 to 1944 was the years you done spent in Australia. They was? He yeah. was in Australia? Oh, certainly, yeah. But he spent the whole war cruising around the Australian veldt on a flat top. Yeah, he was wounded, too. Come back with a purple Anzac. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right, that's right. I was down there, all right. Are you telling the truth here? Oh, certainly, yes, sir. He sent us souvenirs and everything. Sent us two boomerangs and a kangaroo. Yeah, we used to keep the kangaroo around the office here, but he got excited the day of the MacArthur Parade and jumped out the window. <laughs> As we see them, he was hopping down Fifth Avenue in a shower of ticker tape. Now, see here. This Miss Blue distinctly said that the man who jilted her was Andrew H. Brown. Now, how do you explain that? Well, now, uh, uh, that's what you say. Well, oh, no, oh now I see. Uh, now I see the thing. I see it as clear as day. Yeah. Where are you looking, Kingfish? Uh, <laughs> you see, Mother Tompkins, uh, uh, here in town, there's two Andrew H. Brown. And she was referring to Notorious Brown. Or this boy here is Innocent Brown. She done mistakenly identified the wrong boy. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. It's just a mistake. That, that's what it is. Well, if Brown was in Australia with the armed forces, I guess it must have been this other fellow. Oh, yes, sir. It's a common name. Yes, sir. I'm sorry I acted so hastily. Yeah, well, you ain't got to apologize, Mr. Tompkins. Well, I better get back and explain this to Teresa. She's terribly upset. Yeah, well, so long, Pop and Law, dear, and happy Anzac to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, Teresa. It was all a mistake. This Miss Blue had the wrong Andrew H. Brown. Oh, Daddy, I'm so glad. I just knew it wasn't... Oh, I'll get it. Yes, uh, something I can do for you? Are you Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Well, my name is Abigail Simpson. I come up from Alabama to talk to you about Andrew H. Brown. Why, what that man done to me? I tell you, he broke my heart. Why, he... Hey, just a minute. What does this Andrew Brown look like? He's a big, fat loafer that smokes a cigar and wears a dirty. Miss Simpson, I think you better come in and sit down. Well, Kingfish, I got to hand it to you. You sure thunk fast on your feet when Mr. Tompkins come in here about that Miss Blue. Oh, yeah, and the old Kingfish. You got to hand it to me, boy. I got a mind like a pistol. Oh, I tell you. Hmm, someone knocking on the door again. Yeah, and from the sound of that knock, I hope the pistol is loaded. <laughs> Brown, I want to talk to you. Oh, hello again, Papa dear. Brown, this time I've got you dead to rights. Hmm. Another woman just left my place, a uh, Miss Abigail Simpson. Yeah, well, like we explained to you, Miss Tompkins, uh, there's two Andy Browns, the Notorious Brown and the Innocent Brown. There's no mistake this time. The Andrew Brown she referred to is a big fat fellow who wears a derby and smokes a cigar. Now explain that. Yeah, well, now, you see, uh, when I explained to you about the Notorious Brown, I forgot to explain to you that... He also an impersonator. An impersonator? Yeah, you see, he go around wearing derby and cigar with a pillow under his belt. Yeah, doing all these terrible things, and then poor Innocent Brown here get blamed for him. That's what he do. Huh? Yeah. Man, uh... He's a mean fellow, all right. He really is. Well, I don't know. I'd like to believe this for my daughter's sake, but I, I don't... tell Mr. Tompkins, uh, how could you accuse poor Innocent Brown? Now, just look at that face. Yeah, look at that thing. <laughs> I ask you, is there a guile written on that face? 
Is there dishonesty written on that field? Is there deceit written on that field? No, sir. There ain't nothing written on there. <laughs> that is one of the blankest fields you don't ever see. <laughs> Amos, what a day this has been. I was almost too nervous to go home. Andy, from what you've been telling me, the worst is over, though, boy. You and the kingfish done got Mr. Tompkins calmed down. Now, take it easy, Andy, and go on and get some supper. The wedding is tomorrow. Everything's fine. Come on, Andy, I'll go with you. Yeah, all right. I'm, uh, hey, wait a minute, Amos. Look out the window there. Look on the front steps of the lodge hall there. Yeah, there appears to be a woman. Look at that hat and that feather bow. That's a strange-looking human being, in. Yeah, it is. Look at there. She just stepped into light. Holy mackerel, Amos. The worst ain't over. That ain't no human being. That is Madam Queen. No. Now, here's your Rexall family druggist. All of us at one time or another have experienced the cold that comes on with no previous warning whatever. No sniffles, no stuffy nose, no sore throat. None of the usual danger signals. You just wake up some morning with a fully developed cold. Enter Rexall's men of science. They've tackled this problem by combining antihistamine with a time-tested formula of pain relievers known as APC compound. The result? Rexall Anapac. A wonderful new formula that not only gives prompt relief from cold symptoms, but also from the headaches, muscular soreness, and fever that are usually part of a full-grown cold. And that's why today, Anapac is fast becoming a household word for quick, complete, all-around cold relief. So if you suddenly develop a king-size cold, start immediately taking Anapac, as directed on the label. That's A-N-A-P-A-C, Anapac. At Rexall Drugstore, everywhere. Yeah, that's the whole story, Calhoun. The boy is in a mess. Yeah, if Madam Queen go to Mr. Tompkins, we is ruined. Yeah, this is a mess. Because you has got a factor in this situation named Madam Queen. Yeah. And that is the nastiest big factor you could ever run into. <laughs> Look here, look, look, look how, uh, how is the boy though going to keep Madam Queen from talking to Teresa and her papa? Now look, the thing to do is be firm with her. Find out where she's staying and, 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 and go up there and tell her if she go to Mr. Tompkins, you're going to make trouble for her. Big trouble. Yeah, but Madam Queen ain't the type that scares easy. But I guess it's our only chance. Try to talk her out of it, huh? Yeah, but you got to be aggressive. You, you got to pound on the table like this. You got to rant, and you got to roll. You got to tell her that you was finished with her. You got to reiterate that you never want to see her again. You got to pound on the table, and you got to reiterate, oh, oh. Hey, what is the trouble, Calhoun? Help me to the couch, boys. I done reiterated my sacroiliac out of joint. <laughs> This is where Madam Queen is stand at Lennox Gardens. Oh, me, Kingfish. I was nervous. Madam Queen, you know, really had a grip on me once. Yeah, you got to be firm now. Here's the room, Andy. 312, I'll knock. Oh, me. Been ten years or more since I seen her. Maybe she won't even recognize me. Now, listen, Andy. She's probably been sitting out there in Chicago all these years with her heart just being eaten away for you. Yes, yes. What is it? What do you want? Holy mackerel, whatever been eating at her heart must have been nibbling at her face, too. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who is this here? Let me look through my log, Nettie. <laughs> why, it's Andy Brown. Why, you no good two-time chiseling loaf of a man. Now, look here, Andy. Uh, she do remember you, boy. And who is this with you? Why, it's George Stevens' old knucklehead. <laughs> She remembers you, too, Kingfish. Well, so much for the sweet nostalgia of the occasion. <laughs> Madam Queen, uh, me and the boy here has come up to talk with you. Well, come on in the apartment. 
Uh, go ahead, Madam Queen. We'll waddle in after you. <laughs> well, what did you two want to see me about? Now, see here, Madam Queen. I'm going to be firm with you. If you come up here to break up this boy's wedding, you ain't got no hold on him. And no n- hold on him? Do you realize that ten years ago this nincompoop done proposed to me? He done jilted me? He lied to me? He cheated and he swindled me? See ya, Madam Queen, I just wants to say... What does you want to say, knucklehead? <laughs> well, I just want to say that I don't think he should have done it. That's what I want to say. Listen, Madam Queen, please don't go to Mr. Tompkins. After all, let bygones be bygones. We don't like each other no more. Don't like you? I despise you. You never was no good. I never will forget the time you broke your leg and I put you in the hospital and hired two trained nurses. The next thing I knew you was two-timing me on both shifts. (laughs) I I remember when I was in the hospital there. Yeah, you used to bring me hot soup. Yeah, like a fool, I used to sit there and feed it to you out of a spoon. Yeah. (laughs) And you used to call me your big teddy bear. He used to call me your itty-bitty gumdrop. <laughs> I sure made a fool out of myself over you. You made a fool of yourself, huh? Well, I wasn't the only one you made goo-goo eyes at. I never could trust you. Yeah, that's what Andy told me. What is you talking about? Well, look at the time that you and me went to my poor old Uncle William's funeral. Mm-hmm. While I was standing there weeping in the grave. You was behind a hearse holding hands with one of the pallbearers. I forgot about that. <laughs> you sure was jealous, wasn't you? Yeah, well, I had a right to be. You done hurt me. You used to be so cute when you pouted, and I used to chuckle you under the chin. <laughs> and then I'd break down and chuckle you under one of your chins. <laughs> My itty bitty gum. Now wait a minute, y'all. Let me let me let me talk. Now uh, come in, Amos. Come on in here. Yeah, well, thank you, Andy. I just dropped over to see how everything turned out about your wedding, boy. Oh boy, everything turned out fine, Amos. Oh good, Andy. Congratulations. You got rid of Madam Queen, and you're going ahead with your marriage to Teresa. No, Amos, I got rid of Teresa, and next Sunday I'm marrying Madam Queen. Oh, wow! Friends, solve your Christmas shopping worries the easy, economical way. Check Rexall's full-page Christmas ad in current issues of Collier's, Look, Saturday Evening Post, and Country Gentleman. There, in full, true-to-life color, you'll find exactly 44 distinctive, yet reasonably priced gift suggestions. Everything from luxurious toiletries to exquisite stationery, from mouth-watering candies to handsome pen and pencil sets, from electric toasters to lovable toys. Now, don't say Wilcox didn't tell you. Remember, for just right, price right Christmas gifts... See Rexall's full-page, four-color ad in the current issues of Collier's, Look, the Saturday Evening Post, and Country Gentlemen. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, to visit your Rexall family drugstore. Now, just before the holidays, you'll find thousands of gifts and really good ones, too. Thank you and good night. See you next Sunday. Men, if shaving's your worst daily chore, this tip from Wilcox, don't ignore. Stag Brushless Shave Cream starts your day the faster, cooler, no-scrape way. Stag needs no rub-in, smooths right on, wilts those whiskers while you yawn. Stays moist longer, costs no more, and sold at every Rexall store. Stag Brushless Shave Cream. Be sure to be with us next Sunday at the same time when your Rexall druggist will again present the Emerson Andy Show. Stay tuned for the Edgar Berg and Charlie McCarthy program, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.